all just among us some kind of preparation to this uh, great presentation by Professor Esra Uzarchilik. Um, let me introduce myself. First of all, good morning, um, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to all of you. It's because um, we have a wide range of participants from all over the world, different time schedules. Um, that's why I have to say this. Um, let me introduce myself, Nice Bridge Academy, and our professor, Esra, one by one, if you have very limited time. Recording in progress. Uh, my name is Hakan. I am here for um, Nice Bridge Academy, representing Nice Bridge Academy. Nice Bridge Academy is a a London-based dental education and training centre organises um, various events, um, trainings, education and exhibitions um, for the dental sector, for dentists and dental care professionals um, for more than a decade. And it was established by Dr. Blant Mano uh, with more than 30 years of experience and uh, yeah, it's going very well. So uh, we have various uh, trainings. I would strictly recommend you um, to be a member of our mailing list and to follow us from all social accounts. And here, for the international dentists and dental care professionals, I would like to mention briefly about the uh, a few educations here. We have an opportunity uh, for you to work in the UK with AGDP masters uh, as dental therapists and dentists. So it's not, I can't say it is easy, but there is a big opportunity and it is highly possible um, with this education um, to work in the UK. This is called an um, AGDP masters. We are organizing this as Nicebridge Academy with um, College of Medicine and Dentistry and um, also University. You can check our website, kbac.uk, for further information. And also, uh, you can email us for this at um, info at kbac.uk um, anytime. Um, I will be your correspondent about this. Um, education. Um, yeah, at the end, of, I don't want to give too very detailed information, but let me just briefly say, if you want to be a dentist or den dental therapist um, in the UK with this program, yes, you will have to do this. You will have to be the permission to work and you will find your job and you will be eligible to work um, in the UK. And I would like to thank to uh, our sponsor, Sharon Co. Uh, for helping us to organize this um, education. Honestly, I'm not a dentist, although you can see a doctor that is totally irrelevant to uh, being a dentist. That's why I have no idea what will be taught now. Um, my profession is business, uh, but uh, the, the presenter, um, our lecturer, Professor Dr. Esther Uzarchelik, is um, one of the main specialists, very few one. Um, in restorative and cosmetic dentistry based in Izmir, a dream city in Turkey. And she, she will be uh, presenting um, this, mastering the techniques of direct composite venia. And at the end, we will have a Q&A session. So you can just keep your questions um, right down to chat, but I will recommend you uh, to wait for the question and answer session at the end of this session. Um, to write down to the chat there um, on Zoom and she will be answering all of your questions. She'll do, do her best. Um, yeah, I don't want to take your time for long. Um, so I will write down to the chat area. Um, I put my email address and our info email address. And if you have any question about those educations and training, um, please contact me. So I will be leaving the microphone and. Don't worry, I will close my camera as well. You won't, you won't see me anymore this last minute to see me. And yes, I'm leaving it to Professor Esra. It's your turn. Uh, thank you so much. Yes, it's my time. And good afternoon, everybody, because it's afternoon in Izmir <laughs> now. 
Uh, today, I'm going to make a presentation on composite restorations. But before the presentation, also, I would like to thank to Nice Academy and also Saramco for their kind invitation and also kind support. Today, our topic is direct composite vineyard, mastering the technique. And also, it's the first part of our training program. I'm going to give theoretical knowledge about the technique, about the process. But uh, this theoretical knowledge will be under practical methods and practical steps. Uh, yeah. First, I would like to introduce also myself. I live in Izmir and Izmir is a metropolitan city in the western part of Turkey. Yes, we have very really beautiful city. It's the third famous city. It's a very modern, developed and busy commercial center set around a huge bay and also surrounded by mountains. I stay at a university in Izmir. It's a state university and I'm working as a full-time professor. Also, I'm the chief of the Department of Restorative Dentistry. And I'm in charge of undergraduate and postgraduate dental education. I give lots of theoretical and practical courses in the programs. Yes, I'm a clinician. My field is especially aesthetic dentistry. Also, I'm a researcher in the, at, at the university. And I have a nearly 100 journals in peer-reviewed national and international articles in national and international journals. Today our, our topic is direct composite veneer and that composite veneer is the restoration and labial and proximal surfaces but the variety restorations. And their indications are discolorations, the rehabilitation of discolorations, shape and size abnormalities, malpositions, caries and effects on labial surfaces, and hypoplasia. But there are the classical indications. In my clinical practice, I generally use this technique for the rehabilitation for the treatment of pack letters. In that case, the especially the letters are very small, and the patients with that problem generally refer to our clinics in younger ages. I think direct composite veneer is a very good option in that cases. And also, we get very good results in that cases with also direct composite veneers. In young patients for the aesthetic rehabilitation or anterior treat, I also first, my first indication is direct composite veneers. Generally, these patients refer to our clinic after orthodontic treatment for diastema closure. Also, we get good results with the patients. All restorations, sometimes there are large composite restorations on the surfaces, and sometimes the other problems are accompanied with these restorations like size and shape and also discolorations. Also, in that case, first we can prefer direct composite veneers. The other problems are discolorations. Sometimes we encounter really severe discolorations on anterior teeth. In the past, we prefer indirect restorations, but today we have really good composite restoration materials like opaquers, and we can mask really severe discolorations with direct composite materials. So also I use this technique in this color key. Sometimes in some circumstances, yes, the best choice is indirect restoration in that patient, but unfortunately he or she cannot afford its cost and also, I, in that case, I prefer direct composite veneers because of the economical reasons in that patients. The 
Yes, of course. Also, there are some limitations solved by the composite veneers, like gingival irritation, marginal discoloration, surface discoloration, surface roughness, and yield. But I think the most important one is the fractures. Why? Because we can solve the other problems with minimal invasion interventions, also with repair techniques. But unfortunately, when we encounter with fractures, especially when they are located on incisal one third, in that case, you will have to probably replace the composite veneers. It's the main contraindication and main problem in the clinic that we encounter with such kind of restorations. Is there any contraindication? Yes, the main problem, the, the main contraindication is about, I think, occlusion problems, especially when the central incisors, maxillary central incisors, occlude with mandibular central incisors uh, or lateral incisors in centric occlusion. In that case, I do not prefer composite veneers. Why? Because Composite material is more fragile in thin, section, in thin sections. And in this situation, uh, we can see many fractures in the clinic. So I uh, used to prefer indirect, indirect restorations in that occlusal problems. For a successful restoration, to make a successful restoration, first we have to make a detailed treatment plan, including detailed patient assessment and also selection of proper equipment and also proper technique. This is very important. When a patient comes to your clinic, for first you have to take records. And also you have to assess gingival head, gingival symmetry, carries risk profile of this patient, occlusion. And you have to evaluate this patient according to the smile design criteria. Then the photos are really important, especially for two reasons. First, uh, you have to remind the patient his or her initial teeth because probably he or she will forget his initial vivo teeth. So it's, it's really, I think, pretty cool in the treatment. And also, you can use these photos in the treatment plan in further space. So please take the photos before the restorations, before I think all restorations. <laughs> and which photos? From point of aesthetic treatment, you have to take a smiling photo to assess soft tissue levels. And lips at rest will give information about the incisal edge position. 12 o'clock will also will give information about incisal edge positions. You have to evaluate the incisal edge position. It's really important in especially uh, smile line, smiling. And Retracted view will also find you some information about the acid plane of occlusion and retracted also, retracted cross photo will even give information about the function. You can just take these photos from the patient at the beginning and after that you can start your treatment. And the gingival head is really important, and you have to assess the gingival in terms of symmetry and height. And before the treatment, if there's a problem in gingival head, like bleeding or plug uh, accumulation, you have to solve these problems. You have to improve the gingival head or the hygiene of the patient. And gingival symmetry is really important, especially when the patient has a high smile line. Uh, you have to first deal with this asymmetric gingival level and you have to advise this patient uh, to, uh, to a periodontal surgery. 
before the treatment. It's really, I think, good, important point in terms of the aesthetic appearance. It does not just depend on two doses of ginger. It's really important. And high care issues is a critical point in the long-term evaluation and long-term performance of your vineyards. But because just making is not important, also the maintenance is very important. The patient should use these restorations for at least, I think, five years in the community. And the failure is for high care passion is is unfortunately higher. And in this patient, you have to pay attention to some factors for better marginal adaptation, for preventing secondary caries, and also for, for preventing marginal discoloration. So you have to etch the enamel. Uh, if you especially use selfish adhesives because the bonding performance of selfish adhesives is lower to enamel compared to a Chinese adhesives. This is very important to prevent marginal discoloration and adaptation problems and also secondary carriers in high carriers risk patients because they're high carriers risk patients and the risk for carriers occurrence is high in that patients. Use composite brush for better adaptation. Also, uh, this will prevent the forming of any gap between the restoration and the surface. Polish the surface well. You have to get very close to surface to prevent the blood accumulation in that patients. And I advise you smooth to secondary and tertiary anatomy in that patient because they can produce uh, retention areas. And uh, in that places, unfortunately, especially high risk, uh, there can be blood accumulation in fertile periods. So smoother anatomy will be better. And occlusion also should be care carefully evaluated. Should take up all the forces. Notice. Uh, during occlusion evaluation, you have to check or jet or bite contact points and also incisal guidance, lateral movements. The thickness of composites present should not be less than 1.5 millimeter. Where there's a two, two, two composite contact is very important. You have to check this in especially uh, during evaluating the contact areas and lateral wounds, especially if there's, there are bystanders between lateral incisors and canines. And if you, if you have built composite with canines, in this situation, you have to check lateral movements before the restoration, if there's a enough place for this buildup for the composite resin. Next step is smile design. This is a really popular subject nowadays, and people are asking for us smile design. You can make a smile design for, for us. Like this. There are lots of questions like this. Yes, uh, first I think we have to learn the patient's aesthetic desire because, yes, beautiful, yeah, the word beautiful, it means different things to different people. And it's crucial to establish the patient's preference at early stage, I mean, before the restoration. So you know, I think we ask our patients, do you like the visual nature, straight, wide and perfect, or while they're natural or just clean, healthy, and natural. Straight resembles the symmetry, and white resembles, in, in a case, the shape. If our patient wants straight, white, and perfected, then generally we advise them in direct ceramic restorations. But if they prefer white and natural or clean, healthy, and natural, in that case, dynamic composite is also very aesthetic and good options for that patients. In smile design, uh, you may use digital or manual techniques. It's not important, but also uh, digital techniques facilitate our procedures. And there are lots of softwares for this in, in the dental market. For digital smile design, you need photos, and you have to upload these photos to software. And software 
gives you some advices uh, for this uh, digits, smile design. But if you don't use, also you can use manual technique and in the manual technique, you also need photos and diagnostic tests. And uh, by this way, you can make a plan uh, using smile design criteria. The smile design process uh, are assigned into three parts, face analysis, dental facial analysis, also, also dental analysis, yes. And also there are lots of criteria in each group. But today we're gonna to talk about especially midline, lip anatomy, nasolabial angle, sorry, tooth exposure at rest, smile line, incisal edge lower lip position, number of teeth visible during full smile, and also gingival margin position, axial inflammation, tooth shape and proportion. Midline is very, very important and the location of facial midline should be parallel to the maxillary dental midline. Two to four million uh, shifts to right and left, yes, it's acceptable, but we don't, want, we don't want any angle between the facial midline and also dental midline. And we encounter this problem, especially in clothing cases, we have to uh, correct this angle, especially with preparation. And also lip anatomy, this is also important. You can assess how prominent or retreated the lips are from also frontal view and also mm, profile view. Generally, thick lips require longer teeth and thin lips require, require shorter teeth. And the degree of lip support from profiles helps the dentist to determine if the case should be built up or facially or not. And tooth exposure at rest. Yes, this is also important criteria. To assess amount of tooth display at rest, we ask our patients to relax their lips and say the word Emma, then freeze. Please choose the existing incisal edge position. In young patients, generally three millimeter of maxillary central incisors is visible. And this gives our patients a yacht appearance. So the length of the incisive age of our patients teeth will result in a more youthful appearance. We have to also consider uh, the tooth exposure at rest uh, because of uh, this property. And big smile is really important in the smile design because big smiles gives us information about smile line of the patient soft tissue levels, incisors, widths, number of teeth visible during full smile. The smile line is important and it gives information about the amount of gingival display. Unfortunately, high smile line cases will be more challenging uh, in the anterior composite restorations. How many teeth show in a smile also to be assessed because yes, if more than six teeth are visible, we have to consider shape and size of the posterior teeth when we design the new anterior teeth shape and shape. This is important. Every human is unique and special and reflects the and uh, special and reflects the smiler's personality. We have to evaluate the uh, incisor solutes, incline, shape, and dominance of two together. Also, it gives some information about the character of the personality of the fashion. For example, rectangular dented shapes, strong dominance of the central 
incisors and canines under lateral incisors as well as plain incisal edge and rectilinear 3D dental positioning on the arch in the opposite view gives us strong personality also, also fashion. Sorry to interrupt. Can we just little bit raise the voice, please? Or trapezoidal dental shapes, standard dominance, inclined incisal edge, angled 3D dental positioning on the arch. Dr. Esra, can you hear me? And also oval dental shapes, medium dominance, curved incisal edge, standard 3D dental position. This is a delicate personality also to the patient. Uh, dear professor. On secure, square dental shapes with dominance, horizontal incisal edge, 3D rectilinear or standard dental position on the arch also gives core more stable personality to the shape. It means okay. that we, we uh, shouldn't just concentrate on the tooth only. We also consider the face and the, and our patient's personality during creating a new smile. Pro pro professor, professor. Uh, uh, the, can, can you hear me? Dental analyzers. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, professor. Hello. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Şimdi biraz daha açayım. Tamam, teşekkür ederim. I'm sorry. I think you can't hear my voice. Uh, okay, and. Uh, size and the length of central incisors are really very important. The length of the maxillary incisors are between 10.5 to 12.5 millimeter. And also the ratio is important. I mean, the wide of the maxillary central incisors should be 75 to 80% of its height. This is really important. And we have to consider consider this ratio during making new laminate restorations, composite laminate restorations. The length of the late lateral incisors is one to one point five millimeter shorter than canines general uh, central incisors, and also the length of the central incisors is nearly the same with the length of the canines. Uh, when we compare tooth to tooth portion in the smile design. Generally, a uh, golden ratio is commonly used method to determine also the tooth to tooth proportion. Yes, it's a good ratio, commonly used ratio, but it needs a detailed calculation in the clinic. And sometimes we don't have enough time for just the calculation. So I generally use easier one. This is uh, a proportion from Dr. Stefan Kuhs. And according to this proportion, if the central incisors mesial distal width is X millimeter, then the lateral should be should measure X minus two millimeter and the canine should be X minus one millimeter. And it means that first, uh, we have to calculate the width length ratio of the central incisors. And according to this ratio, we may lengthen or widen the teeth. After the preparation of the length, designing the length and width of the central incisors, then uh, we're going to keep on with lateral incisors and canines. Uh, we have two proportions length, central incisors similar to canine. And lateral incisors is shorter, one to five millimeter to two, one, one or one point five millimeter from central incisors. And we have also one calculation uh, with which, uh, if the central incisor is x, lateral incisors x minus two and canine x minus one. We have to use both formulas for designing the width and length of the anterior tooth by the smile design, any digital technique or manual technique. But we have to consider 
uh, this feature, when uh, we are making this plan, central incisors should be symmetrical. Then uh, we try to make lateral incisors symmetrical and uh, the asymmetry in the canines can be compensated uh, with the patients. We have to consider uh, this characteristic is purported during making a smile design because in each case, uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough space for making all anterior teeth symmetric. And the gingiva also is important. The gingival height of the maxillary centers and also canines should ideally be nearly at the same level with that of the lateral incisor being 1.1 to 1.5 millimeter below this line. This is especially very critical in the high smile line fashion and it should be improved, uh, corrected with a surgical periodontal surgery before the treatment. If we really want very aesthetic results in our patients. And the metro use and equipment, one must keep in mind that to get better results, we should have proper materials and equipment. This is really important. First, which equipment or materials we need during the treatment for all anterior aesthetic restorations, composite restorations, rubber dam, composite spatula, and also we will use composite brush, explorer, preparation burst, finishing and polishing, polishing discs, finishing strips, matches, and uh, composite resin, adhesive system, and magnification. And all, uh, generally, we prefer loops for the restorative dentistry. And rubber dam. There are different types and brands in the dental market in different thickness, in different colors, and in different sizes. I generally prefer Nikton rubber dam, especially heavy one, heavy one, for preventing the dam from tearing because it's a really very, I think, undesirable situation in the clinic. But also, you may use medium. It can be because a good option for the stomach closure. The heavy one can be folded and you have to stretch the heavy one carefully if you don't want any folded area between the diastemas. And also, you can use the other alternative. 3D rubber dam also is a good alternative, especially when you use suctions in the mouth. Yes, if you use rubber dam very well, you get a very clear vision and you get a, a very good uh, operative area without blood, saliva, and any fluid, and also without any soft tissue. Yes, in some cases, we could not use rubber dam. And retraction core should be applied in that situation in the gingival sulcus so to prevent the fluid and blood contamination. We have lots of an alternative in the dental market. The retraction cores and are in different sizes, but for anterior restoration, generally we prefer zero. And the cores are in different chains, as you see. Needled one facilitates easy packing and stays placed better than any twisted or braided core. Ultra pack generally has such kind of uh, cord. And the burrs, also we need burrs. And burrs for preparation, especially in some cases for composite veneer restorations. Yes, first burr is depth marker. It's used to limit preparation depth and we use this burr in both direct and indirect composite veneers. Chamfer burr is preferred also for preparation and making a chamfer in gingival and also proximal area. And football and flame burrs are used for finishing in composite restorations. Well, we have so we, we have we have to provide also these burrs before the preparation. 
And hand instruments also had this a controversial issue because in the dental market, there are lots of hand instruments and the manufacturers claim that, oh, our product is very, very good and composite never stick to our uh, product. Yes, in the market, there are lots of alternatives. As I said before, they can be uh, from titanium, titanium nitrate, diamond, or special steel coated and non-stick. Yes, this, com this composite placement instruments get really good and hard dentist space, carved and also counter composites with complete ease. And they're generally out of, out of lovable. This is, I think, and is, is very good advantage. In the clinic, you can use any of them. Really, they are good, I think. Instruments. I generally prefer Elamarte or Hufredi in my clinical practice, but unfortunately, uh, nearly all composites can stick to all materials. So during instruments, yes, with alcohol especially. Also, there are different instruments to facilitate the placement of the composite in dental markets, like, like vibrating instruments, all-in-one vibrating instrument. Therefore, composite and modeling suitable for all restorations also. And their technology optimizes the thixotropic properties of composites by changing their viscosity without altering their chemical or mechanical characteristics. They're, they're, this is very good advantage, I think. The instruments, Allows, allows for superior adaptation of composites to cavity walls and without any air bubbles, control of layer thickness, which reduces thickness and improves scalp ability. Yes, and uh, this sounds very good in the clinical practice. Also, Optra scalp pad, also, it's a countering instrument with special foam pad attachments. Also, it's designed for the efficient non-stick forming and shaping of composite fillings. But they're good play instruments. But I think in the clinical practice, you need first just thin, flexible composite spatula and also composite brush. Also, this is a very frequently asked question, should I use a composite brush and should I use a modeling resin for wetting the composite or wetting the brush? Yes, I advise you, I strictly advise you to use composite brush during making any composite restorations in both anterior and posterior. Modeling brush for composite is required to improve the adaptation of composite resin and to smooth the composite restoration surface. You, you get a also very good surface without any bubbles. For better surface perception, try to use them dry, but in some cases, you cannot slide it if they're very dry. In the cases that they are compatible with using modeling resins, modeling liquids. But also I have to, I want to give some advices about modeling resins to you. Uh, yes, they resin-based materials like adhesive systems, but these are special products for model as a modeling resin. This means that they are resin-based, but they do not include solvent. This is very important. So if you want to use a wedding resin, you have to use special products that is designed for this area, like modeling liquid, like modeling resin, like wedding resin. You shouldn't use adhesive between unpolymerized composite layers because adhesive systems include solvents and you have to remove the solvents after the application. If you cannot remove it, because we, the, if the composite resin is unpolymerized, you cannot remove by air drying because it, it will destroy the composite surface. And in that cases, uh, there will be some bubbles, some gas between your composite layers. So between unpolymerized composite resin, we strictly advise to use just modeling resins. And also use little amounts of this material, just wet the brush, because large amounts can negatively affect the surface hard hardness of, the, of your composite resin. Be careful, just wet your brush, it's enough. 
Yes, using Gore Composites Brush to ring a composites application. And then verse. I have to also I have to check the time. Yes, I have time. Uh, diamonds and tungsten carbide burrs are also used for finishing, finishing and polishing discs, finishing and polishing wheels, interapproximal finishing strips, and polishing paste can be used for finishing and polishing uh, today in the in the treatment in the making composite veneer restorations. And yes, burrs, diamond and tungsten carbon burrs are used for finishing for raw surface. I, I advise first use the red ones, I mean fine burrs, because generally in that case, the surface is very raw and uh, this extra fine burrs can lead to ditches on the surface. In, so on the raw surface, First, use fine. Then, when you smooth the surface, then use extra fine burrs. Dental finishing discs are rotary tools, and some of which can be used without polishing paste. So, we use them in composite restorations frequently. And uh, finishing discs can be coarse or soft, and generally are typically used in a specific sequence to achieve the final nature, looking polish and luster. Generally, I use medium and coarse ones uh, to achieve the shape, general shape and line angles. And also fine and extra fines are used for polishing the proximal surface in anterior restorations. Polish, we use polishing strips. In the past, they were a little, a little bit thick, so we use them under the contact point. But today, they're also uh, good products, very thin products like Epitex. Epitex strips are ultra thin because the abrasive particles are not bonded uh, to the strip by an adhesive in that product. And thanks to this feature, Epitex allows easier access in tight contact points, helping to minimize gingival damage. And also, you can use them also uh, very slowly between the contact points, in the contact points. This is an advantage, not just under the Contact points. In the classical technique for polishing, diamonds or aluminum plates are used with bristle brush and fat disc for getting a shiny surface. But this is traditional technique. In this technique, you may use aluminum oxide paste or diamond paste. Both of them is suitable for composite. For example, for ceramic, you just use diamond. And uh, in this technique, you have to use this paste for first with bristle brush and then fat disc. And you have to keep polishing uh, until you get very shiny, very luster surface. But today, there are easier techniques. Uh, these are diamond impregnated wheels, and they're used for finishing and polishing. By this way, you provide easy polishing procedure thanks to just two polishers. The pre-polisher, generally there are two polishers in the systems. Yes, the first one uh, is nearly medium. And by this uh, polisher, you finish the surface. And uh, by the high shine polisher, you can finish with a very natural high gloss result in seconds. This, uh, this materials tessellates the polishing procedure very well. So I strictly advise to use them in composite restorations, especially in microhybrid composites, because to polish the microhybrid composites sometimes takes longer time, and uh, this uh, decreases the time needed for this equipment decreased the time needed for polishing microhydrate composite especially. And also their auto flavor. Yes, uh, and composite resin, especially, uh, yes, of course we need composite resin for composite restorations. 
And nowadays we can use traditional composites and also restorative flowable composites for the composite resin restorations. As a traditional composites, you have to choose today microhybrid composites, nanohybrid composites, and nanofield composites. And uh, according to knowledge in the lit literature, today we can say that all of them can be used in anterior restorations in terms of their mechanical strength and also uh, shade and also aesthetic properties. All of them are suitable. We can use all of them. Today, we're going to use a product from Ceramco. LS Composites is a light curing radiopark microhybrid composite with extremely low shrinkage stress. Because you have to know, you have to know your composite very well, uh, its properties, its advantages, and its limitations before the restorations. Uh, and this product is free of take DMA and EMA, also proven to have extremely low shrinkage stress, good marginal seal, large number of lively stable colors for perfect aesthetics, and also simple handling, easily sculpt and positionally stable. We have to know also its ingredients. Uh, it includes PCMA and also silanized and organic fillers. As you see, its polymerization shrinkage amount is very low. This is very uh, good property in terms of marginal gap, marginal adaptation, and also marginal discoloration, secondary carriers, because if the polymerization shrinkage is high, there can be gap between the restoration and also between the restoration and tooth. And also, you have to know the shades in that composite set. This composite has 12 white shades and also uh, two opaque shades as a dentin substitute, eight spatial shades. Incisal shades are designed to match the natural incisal areas with a natural opalescence and level of translucency. And also, this system has white shades, but snow white shades. And uh, white shades are very white. Uh, snow white shades are for very white restorations because today many patients want a brighter and, brighter and wider smile. By today's standards, the snow white is wider and wider than the lightest shade on the Vita shade guide. It, this means that snow wider is a wider shade compared to B1, the whitest shade in Vita. And restorative low level composites, and it's a new era in composite resin, completely different from the classical flowable composites because their filler ratio is higher than the traditional flowable composite. So the restorative flowable composite, it means that we can use these composites uh, in all cavities uh, without any traditional comp composite. Their filler ratio is nearly between 70% to 80%. Their mechanical properties are similar to that of traditional composite because of the higher filler ratio and their very resistance is enough so for both or for all anterior and posterior restorations. This is a new era. This, and this, rest, this material is suitable for also all composite restorations in anterior region. We can use this material for diastema closure for composite veneers. They have also um, large shade skill. Also they have, for example, opaque shades, typical flowables, but their main problem is the polymerization shrinkage, unfortunately, because Typical flowers shrink about 3%, while conventional resin shrinks 2% or less than 2%. The, and also the application characteristic is completely different from the traditional composite. 
because you cannot stop a global composite, but also they have uh, tryptostrophic property. So you can easily manipulate this kind of resin. Also, this, this has different advantage in the application. Also, you can use such global composite with special techniques called injection molding. It involves injection a low viscosity resin composite in a pressured transparent silicon matrix made from a diagnostic backup aiming to replicate an already performed mock-up and, and improve to form arrangement. It's also a simple technique. But the main advantage of the, this technique is generally just you can just use one trade. And the adhesive systems, they're really important. In the anterior restorations, in the non retentive restorations, like composite linears, like, like uh, diastemas, because you don't have a cavity, uh, you just want your composite to bond to the very smooth surface. This is a very challenging process in the restorative dentist in the clinic. And adhesive systems are really important for retention, marginal discoloration, and marginal adaptation of composite finial restorations. Today in the dental market, we have three options H and Rins adhesive systems, universal adhesive systems, and self-edge adhesive systems. Their main difference is their adhesion mechanisms or and the etching uh, process, etching style. I mean that. In HND systems, the adhesion mechanism depends on micromechanical adhesion, and you have to etch enamel and dentin with this adhesive system. But in self edge cases, the situation is different. The adhesion depends on both micromechanical and chemical ad adhesion, and you can etch the enamel if you want to include the addition to enamel, but you, couldn't, you shouldn't etch the dentin in classical self-etch systems. The other alternative is the universal adhesives. Yes, also their addition mechanism depends on mechanical and chemical addition, but you can use them without etching the enamel or dentin, but also uh, it's optional. Also, you can use it uh, with acid edge on enamel and dentin. This is the advantage of the systems. You can use universal adhesives in all adhesive modes. Uh, this is really very good advantage of these systems. And the main difference of universal and self edge adhesives you cannot use classical self-edge adhesives with acid etching and dentin, but you can use universal adhesives with acid etching and dentin because acid etching of dentin with classical self-edge systems unfortunately de decrease the bone strength of uh, these adhesives to dentin. But for composite veneers, especially when we work on enamels, uh, we have to use acid. acid. I, I mean that we have to make a pre-etching in all adhesives. It means that uh, the adhesive system that you use is not important, but on composite, when, you, you, when you make a composite veneer restoration, if you study, if you work on enamel, you have to use acid before the application of self-edge or HMS adhesive. And dentin, because sometimes, uh, because of there is any defects, we have to uh, work on dentin, also making the composite veneer restorations. In this situation, if the dentin is a normal dentin, has a dentin, then in that case, generally, I prefer to use self-edge or universal adhesive in self-edge mode. I don't acid the dentin if the dentin is normal in that case. But if we have to work on abraded dentin or eroded dentin, in that case, I generally prefer to use universal adhesive system, but in HMV mode. 
In that cases, I prefer to etch the dentin before the application of a basal system. And today we're gonna use LAS Unibond. It's a light, light curing one component self etch adhesive to create a permanent marginal gap free adhesion between the tooth structure and the light curing filling fixing material. It's a free or it's a product free of BCMA, TPMA, and also M1. It has a very high adhesion values, time saving processing and patient, therefore particularly used to, to, suitable for children. And also we can use this adhesive in all etching techniques, non-edge, total edge selective, it means that the same was of adhesive. It includes ethanol and water as a solvent, and it also includes ethoxylated HDMA, phosphoric acid metaclot, and initiators. As I said before, for the comfort, also you have to know the properties, the ingredients of your adhesive system. This is very important in IT dentistry. And the magnification. Magnification, I think, also, also, also is, is important to make a very good restoration. Magnification may facilitate the creation of stable composite resin restorations that are less, like, less likely to develop carriers, cracks, or margin stays over years of service because you pay attention to the details when you use loops of magnification. You get a clear and better vision, which leads to improved clinical performance by using loops. The working distance can be kept a comfortable constant, ensuring also upright posture throughout working life of the practitioner. Also, it's very, very beneficial for the posture of a dentist. As the magnification increases, the field that can be viewed decreases. So it's possible to obtain loops that magnify as much as today, I think, uh, 10 times. However, in practical terms, a magnification of uh, 2 or 2.5 would enable the dental operator to see multiple quadrant areas in focus. This is the magnification normally generally dentists use. But at magnifications older than 3, 4, 3.5, the field becomes restricted to a single quadrant and a, a, a magnification beyond 3.5, the view becomes increasingly restricted and, until only a single tooth is seen. So uh, this makes high magnification unsuitable for routine operator dentistry. So you have to choose the magnification very carefully, but you want to make with this look. This is the important point, I think, uh, because um, very high magnification is helpful when uh, you're studying on special procedures like endodontics. And yes, also we talked about uh, treatment plans, the patient, and the materials and equipment. Now it's time to talk about the treatment states. Uh, the treatment states of a composite veneer restoration is our shared selection, silicon index, preparing a silicon index, isolation, reparation, adhesive application, layering, finishing, and polishing, and maintenance. First step is shared selection. Successful shape taking and color commutation are source of great difficulties of the practitioners. First, you have to know some characteristics of the color. Color has three components, pool, chroma, and value. Pool is a type of color, for example, red, green, blue, and it is determined to the color of dentine. Chroma is the depth or saturation of the blue. And value is the brightness of the blue. Age is very important in dentistry for the color of the teeth and for shade selection. I think. In the patient, chroma is because decreased and value is increased. 
uh, in older patients, chroma is increased and value is decreased. Yes, several systems have been developed to accurately aid recording color and trade. And also, we, we are very focused on color and trade in the training programs, in the education programs, and postgraduate, and also in undergraduate. But uh, they, ha they have still had limitations regarding the view of translucency because the, your positivity and translucency of your resolutions are also very, very important characteristics to. Uh, get a good color match. For a perfect shade match, the opposite of composite restoration also should match the opposite of the symmetrical tooth. But unfortunately, there's no standardization there. And each composite has different opacity, even in the same category such as enamel shade. Yes, this is a very challenging uh, situation in the clinical practice, I think. And yes, uh, shape matching is a very difficult step in dentistry. It should be given special attention and appropriate time before the restoration for this step. For a better shape selection, you have to answer two questions. This is just not for composite views, for all anterior restorations, sorry. First, which shape? Uh, what is the initial shade of tooth? And which shades of composite system should I use for catching this shade? And the principles of shade selection, food shade selection, is we have to use daylight and we have to take the shade in. Uh, three to five seconds. We have to use gray background and lipstick should be removed. Tooth surfaces should be very clean without plug, without any accumulation, and remnants of food also. And the, the patient should be at the eye level of the dentist. And this means that first you have to take the patient's shape, the, 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 the initial uh, tooth shape. You can use with a scale system or for an objective shape selection, also you can use dental spectrophotometer. During shape selection, you may be, uh, you, may, uh, some, you, you cannot decide one, just one shape. In this case, you should reduce Use the attributes to uh, two shades. After that, you have to also decide how many shades will you use. You have to consider the uh, this how many use that you have to shade. You have to consider the lost tissues. This is very important for translucency and opalescency or op 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 Operations of the restoration. Uh, for example, there's a problem, there's a fracture uh, in that case. You have to first, yes, try to determine the initial shape, but also you have to uh, determine which shades, I mean, enamel shades, dentin shades, or translucent shades. And you have to consider the lost tissues when you're deciding which shades you're going to use. Uh, then you have to check the catalogs of the composite system that we will use, uh, which shades can be used in that system for get a shade, either shades, dentin shades, opaque shades, or some special shades. After that, use button technique. In this technique, place small composite balls onto the tooth. Dentin shades should be placed on cervical tooth. Inner shade should be placed close to the incisive one third or in the middle. And incisive shades should be placed beyond the incisive edge to assess their translucency. 
uh, you have to use, you have to apply these buttons on the restorations, but uh, it shall restore on, on food, and, but the food surface shouldn't be wet. And you have to also light cure these balls after you apply them onto the food. Yeah. Unfortunately, during the process, there can be a little bit of hydration. So also you can wash the tooth surface and the composite balls with a air water syringe in uh, this stage. After that, you choose one shade from your two alternatives. And the next step is silicon index. Silicon index is an impression of the wax up intended for transferring uh, the information into the mouth during treatment. It allows the dentist to fully focus on the application of composite layers and uh, also the second dimensions are already perfectly defined on the test model generally. The length, also the, the incisive edge position of the desired final result, as well as the mesial and distal angles, the incisal thickness, and also facial greater respiration. And you can completely rely on the matrix to guide you in making what your patient wants. If you also uh, argue the, and talk about the final result with the patient. You may use silicone index in new situations for two reasons. One, if the patient includes, uh, uh, if the, your preparation will include incisal edge, and also if there are diastema between the teeth. In that uh, situations, generally we use silicone index also in composite, in direct composite in your restorations. Because also we need silicone index for layering. We need a palatal wall. We use it to make a palatal wall. So, for creating a silicone index, first take impression from your patient and then prepare a diagnostic test. Second, prepare wax up for your restorations and make a silicone index to put a system um, from this cast model. The second alternative is if the palatal side is in nice edge position are proper, uh, or the old restorations palatal size inside the edge positions are proper, then you may make the silicon index directly using these old restorations. How should be the ideal silicon index? Also, I'm going to show the, how to make a silicon index in the second and third part of our training program in the lab, also, uh, also in the live patient. But uh, I'm going to also give some theoretical information about uh, these techniques. It should be well adapted to the palatal sides of teeth. Bubbles should not exist on the surface. Also, it, just, it should just include inside the edge. But it shouldn't turn to faster surface. If there are excessive materials on butter surface, you have to remove it with the scalp. You can measure the thickness of inside the lash with a periodontal probe and smooth the index edge with a sand paper to get a very uh, good build and you can take photos. Uh, Codex was a new instrument designed to make a palatal wall without using a silicon index. Also, it facilitates this procedure. Isolation, as I said before, is one of the biggest game changers in composite tracing restorations. You can get better adhesion composite restorations without fluid or fluid contamination with a proper isolation. The best way for isolation is use a rubber dam. It prevents saliva, cervical fluids, and blood contamination. 
And also, all soft tissue are retracted from the operating area when you use rubber band. And as you see, there's no soft tissue traction, no saliva, no blood, no any fluid in the operating area. Yes, this facilitates the operative procedures. Now, I couldn't uh, work without rubber band. Yes, yes, I can say this. Yes, after placing the dam to the tooth onto the circular area, you have to stabilize it, especially when you're working close to the cervical area. Because then does its spring action below the height of contour of a tooth and then the floors, blinkers and clamps can be used for retention of rubber band. They may also help to select the retractor gingival and we need this retraction when you're working very close to the cervical area. Especially also in the closet and in the composite veneers. <clears throat> We can use dental floors for stabilizing the dam on the cervical area. This is a commonly used technique. But also be built before clamp or breakers can be used for this reason. I generally mm, use nowadays breakers or clamps for this aim. There, there are different clamps. In the dentist market, until you clamps on you. You may make right and left pairs by cutting the wings of clamps. Because with a butterfly clamp, it's really sometimes hard to mm, place the mattress system to measure or this surface. So, uh, generally, uh, in uh, studying. In anterior region, you need left and right pairs. Uh, professor, we cannot hear you. Uh, your voice is switched off. Yeah, okay, you can hear now. Okay. Um, I think uh, we have to give a break for 10 minutes because you couldn't hear I think my voice nearly for uh, two or three minutes. Yeah. So after that break, we're going to go on. Sorry about this technical problem. No problem. Okay. Okay. 10 minutes? Thank you so much. Okay. 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes, I think enough. Yeah, okay, 10 minutes is enough. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. See you in 10 minutes. Thank you.
So you can check that. Um, so uh, after you uh, finish the presentation, you can ask, uh, sorry, you can ask the questions. Okay. And, uh, if you wish, uh, we can uh, allow the people um, to join the meeting uh, with their voice and, um, you know, camera. So, because some of them uh, want to ask face-to-face -face questions. So if we have time, we can allow them to join, right? Okay, it's, it's suitable for me. Also, you can allow okay. face-to-face questions, okay. correct. Thank you. I'm gonna stop my voice and camera for a minute. It's fine. Not, not so much, five minutes maybe, maybe less. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Hear me now? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because now I'm using a microphone. Oh, it's better. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I don't know uh, exactly in which slides I was unmute. Do you remember? Uh, I, I, I think Clem. It was it's, um, the, the, begin, the beginning of Clem. Clem uh, and also very sick. No, Clem. Oh, before? Uh, no, 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 no. Maybe I'm sorry. No, sorry. <laughs> maybe uh, three minutes ago. <laughs> That's so, <all>. yes. <clears throat> okay. Let's uh, keep on presentation. Okay, there are different anterior clamps in dental markets. And you may make right and left prayers by cutting the wings of this clamp because when you use butterfly, butterfly clamp in the anterior region, unfortunately, it's really hard to use a mattress band in that cases. So we need two pairs in anterior region for all composite veneers or for the other composite restorations. As I said before, if you use rubber dam isolation, you can get very clear vision with rubber dam application. And uh, this is a different view from the isolation. And as you see, you can see the cervical areas clearly because pingual retraction can be achieved very well with rubber dam application. But unfortunately, in some uh, circumstances, the use of rubber dam is not possible. In this case, you can use retractors. I advise you the new attractor from Ultradent Umbrella. It's a really very good tongue clip and cheap retractor and you can use it easily. And also your patient can easily tolerate this retractor. So I strictly advise this re retractor during making a restoration, composite restoration. And also you can use in, uh, cotton rolls for this AM and sections, of course. For the, for the prevention of blood and ingual fluid contamination, also you can use retraction cords. And the adhesive system application. Yes, you, in the first part, you select your adhesive system that will, that will you use. But also its application technique is very important. It's a critical issue for longer retention, better marginal adaptation, and also preventing marginal discoloration. As you see, first, the surface should be clean and dry because any fluid, any saliva, and also any plug can buffer the acids of your adhesive systems. And but after that, unfortunately, you can't, you can't do enough demineralization. You can't make an enough demineralization. Apply the acid gel 
onto whole surface on which you will work. For etch and with enamel etching, you should be done for 15 to 30 seconds. Acid etching, you should uh, apply the acid etching for this time in etch and with adhesives. But when you use universal adhesive system or a self etch adhesive system, this per period should be shorter, such as 10 to 15 seconds, because this system also includes acidic bonomers. So you don't need longer times for acid etching. And apply the adhesive system to full surface with brush or an applicator. The difference between the applicator and the brush, there are two differences. The first one is you couldn't get a tactile sensation with a brush. So in pe posterior, I generally prefer applicators. But also uh, to apply the adhesive system into the small areas, into the gaps is easier with brush. So I generally use brush in anterior region instead of applicators. Follow the manufacturer's application, manufacturer's instruction when you apply the adhesive system. Leave, apply the adhesive system, leave undisturbed for a period of time recommended by the manufacturer after end of application. This generally is 10 to 20 uh, seconds for each adhesive system. And then dry the surface. This is very important to remove the um, solvents in the adhesive system. You have to remove ethanol or other solvents in the adhesive system until the adhesive film does not visibly move under fair to air pressure. This is very, very important because if you do not remove adhesive system well, then probably it won't uh, well polymerized. And this will cause many problems in the long-term clinical performance of your restoration. And the preparation step. The next one is preparation step. Yes, different from indirect composite veneer restorations, preparations it is not obligatory. So there's not a standard preparation depth for composite veneers. It depends on the ideology. There are two options for the preparation for the composite veneers. You may use additive techniques or you may use subtractive techniques for direct composite restorations. In additive composite veneers, we just rough, them, rough, rough the surface with a fine diamond burr to remove outline hypomineralized surface, hypomineralized part of the enamel. And we use this technique for worn, abraded or crock teeth. But also uh, we can make a preparation in for the direct composite veneers. Tooth preparation pre principles are similar to the that of indirect veneers. Preparation depth generally depends on the ideology, but it's generally 0.3 to 0.5 millimeter. And in direct composite veneers, dentin exposed does not affect addition and does not affect the long-term clinical performance of the direct composite veneers because uh, the most commonly problem in the direct composite veneer is not the bonding because we use additive technique and our new adhesive systems has very good performance on both and dentin on both dentin enamel. But in indirect restorations, the main problem is the bonding. So we need enamel for, very, for better indirect restorations for the, their uh, long-term clinical performance. The main difference between indirect and direct restorations is this pro adhesion mechanism. And we encounter adhesion problems with indirect composites um, much more compared to direct composite restorations.
Yes, preparation dep depends on the etiology. And dentin exposed does not affect adhesion. And we start first from facial surface. We first start from facial preparation. And then we keep on preparation from gingival area. And uh, this gingival preparation is needed if there will be a clear difference between initial and final restoration. It may be in the same level generally with the gingival area or at most 0.3 millimeter below the gingival margin. And approximal preparation also is important. Uh, we don't want to open the contact points and we, the preparation should be ended 0.25 millimeter in front of the contact points. And 0.2 to 0.5 millimeter chamfer preparation is preferred for approximal preparation. But sometimes we have to open the contact points when for the rehabilitation of diastema, for the, I mean for the diastema closer, uh, if there's a clothing, if there is caries on approximal surfaces, to remove the old restorations and to mask the discolored surface and also for changing the em emergency profile, we open the contact points in that cases. And incisal preparation. You can prepare incisal edge in two ways. You can use feather edge technique or a joint technique. In the feather edge technique, incisal edge is preserved, preserved. facial preparation reads to the incisal edge and facial, facial part of incisal margin can be thinned out and be used as a palatal wall in that case. And I prefer this preparation in many cases and when I make composite veneer restorations, especially on canines, to prevent two to restoration contact during biting. Also, it has some disadvantage, but I think for composite veneer, it's a good uh, preparation type. Feather edge design is a good for composite veneers because by this way you prevent two to restoration contact. And but joint design, a reduction of the incisal edge is achieved in that design, the composite thickness, but should be at least 1.5 to 2 millimeter to prevent the fracture of the incisal edge. As I said before, composite resin material is a little bit fragile in thick sections. So we have to preserve this thickness for the maintenance of our restorations for a longer period in the clinical conditions. Yes, also this is an example of a composite veneer, the composite veneer preparation from the clinical perspective. As you see, very small preparation, uh, shallow preparation is enough. Another example, I use feather edge technique in this patient. And after preparation and adhesive application and layering sequence will start. First step is creating a palatal wall. Apply the composite first on the silicone index and adapt it to the palatal wall. It should be, the thickness of the palatal wall should be between 0.3 to 0.7 millimeter. And you can use enamel or incisal shades to create this palatal wall. Then a proximal wall is created using matrix system. You can use a sectional matrix span. It's a very economical way of making a proximal wall, but there are different attributes. Also, also I'm gonna show it in the practical part. You can use also special metric systems like Unica Anterior from Polidentio from Style Italiano. 
And you may use also wet or like curing resin for stabilizing the band. Then, yes, this is the creation of the approximal vault. We generally prefer thin approximal vaults and short. Then apply the main tray to the facial surface according to the control of this surface. And if you make a incisal preparation, cut back the incisal one third in this step and make mammalons in that area with the same trade. If uh, you make just enam you make preparation on enamel, and if you don't want mask and a discoloration, in that case, as you are on the enamel, you have to use enamel shade, standard shade, or incisal shade. We, during making any restorations, we generally use dentin shades very rare, just masking a discoloration of uh, if uh, we reach dentin because of any defect or caries. In the other situations, I mean, when we're on enamel, we use enamel alternatives. Then apply the main shade, yes. Uh, and then apply the incisor shade. And you, by this way, finish the layering. After layering, uh, we keep on with finishing and polishing. And for finishing and polishing, first primary anatomy, then secondary, and then tertiary anatomy. In the primary anatomy, you have to create shape of tooth, facial embrasures, uh, three facial planes, and also line angles. This is the three facial planes of tooth, and we have to follow this inclination during creation, cre cre creating the facial surface. This is very important. And also you have to check it from the inc incisal aspect if it's suitable for this tooth. And secondary anatomy, we give vertical macro texture and more visible with the V-shaped grooves during making, creating a secondary, a secondary anatomy. In the territory anatomy, perchymetria and various forms of surface stealing usually present in younger teeth. And secondary anatomy and tertiary anatomy makes your restoration more natural, especially in young patients, because in young patients, they're very clear and they're very prudent. And this is the samples of secondary and tertiary anatomy, I mean, texture of different composite, lamina, composite veneers from different patients. There are, these are the examples, yes. And some clinical cases, as you see, uh, this is composite veneer from canine to canine. As you see, if you use uh, classical white paint, you get very natural restorations with composite veneers. It's really hard to, dis to distinguish if this uh, uh, restoration or a tooth. This can be achieved by direct composites, composite resin. So I love direct composites. And also different cases and different cases from Ceramco. When you use classical with white shades, you can get the more natural restorations. This is a case of uh, erosion. And we also give the other opportunities, written opportunities to my patient I give. And uh, we, at the end of, uh, 
talking about the advantages and disadvantages, we decide to make composite veneer restorations to the patients and yes, we get very good results in the patients with composites. We use uh, microhybrid composites, LES composites, and universal adhesives in that case. And the smile, as you see, the big change in the smile. Yes, the patient was very happy at the end of the restoration. Yes, you can get very natural restorations, but nowadays, as I said before, our patients generally desire a wider smile, a brighter smile. In the cases, you can use bleach shades or snow white shades. This is an example, this is a clinical example. Uh, in that case, we use snow white shade, the initial view of teeth. Yes, in this patient, there are lots of problems like caries or restorations. And yes, we remove the restorations. We make direct venereal composite restoration to that patients and we get very good results also. Also the smile of my patient was very changed after the treatment. From different views. In that case, in that case also there are restorations and also discoloration. The patient wanted wider and brighter smile. I use no white shade in that cases. In that case, I added the change to the shape of teeth. The result was very satisfactory for the patient. You can see the also very clear change in the smile after the treatment. And also, this is an abrasion case. In general, I don't prefer composite resin restoration in the abrasion case, but this patient uh, was undertaken, uh, come subjected to orthodontic treatment. And after the orthodontic treatment, uh, yes, I made composite veneer restorations to that patient. After the occlusion problem was solved, I uh, make these restorations. Also, the patient wanted wider smile and I used snow white shade in that patient. Also, you can see the change in the smile. We made also bleaching treatment to the other teeth in the patient. Yes, my photo is okay, but also we have to analyze our, our, our final results and our restorations from the facial aspect. Also, it's a good sample before the treatment and after the treatment. Yes, applying proper technique is important. Making good restoration is important. But I think the maintenance of these restorations for a longer time is also very, very critical uh, during in operative restorative dentistry. And uh, we have to advise uh, some factors to our patients after the composite veneers, because as I said before, also they, these restorations have some limitations and they, the main problem, I mean, uh, the main problem that will, that is very important for the patient and you is fracture of the restoration. So I think the, you have to give some advices to your patient. First, six monthly professional dental cleans for all composite resin veneers and an upgraded tooth flows, to, toothbrush and flows for home care maintenance. Uh, it means that, yes, uh, your patients should come to controls, follow-up sessions, and also you have to improve the hygiene of your patients. 
first rule is that. And also second one is wearing a protective splint at night if the patient grinned his teeth or clenched his jaws. This is also important. Avoid harsh abrasive toothpaste because uh, yes, we get today our pollution system are improved and our composites are improved. So we get very, very lustrous shiny surface after the treatment. But to protect this surface, the patient should avoid harsh abrasive, use of harsh abrasive toothpaste. And habits such as opening packages with his teeth, biting to it, shaving ice, nail biting, or pipe smoking should be avoided. And avoid staining food or drink. This is also, uh, will also prevent uh, the surface discoloration. Firstly, to prevent the surface discoloration by time. Your patient should avoid staining food or drink frequently, especially. Yes, by this way, I finished my theoretical pre my presentation. I, I finished the theoretical part of the presentation. Thank you for your kind attention. Okay. I, Thank you very much. I think nearly my time is over. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, can you see the question and answer uh, box? Yes, I can see the question and answer yeah, box. Have, and I think there are yeah, 17, 17 questions. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you want to read the questions or may I read and answer them? Yeah, yeah it's better your uh, own. Uh, read and answer okay you, you can switch off um, your uh, presentation you can take from the yes share your screen i uh, stop share screen okay stop share screen i stop can you see my slides no no you okay. can see you okay thank you so much uh, and yes from chat and question answer and thank you, thank you. But there are two boxes. One is question and answer. One is chat. So the questions is no. I, I couldn't do question answer box. Uh, after I closed my share, I couldn't yeah. see them. I I could just see the chat one. Yeah, yeah. Can can you see the, the three points? Hi, question answer. No, yes, yes. No, I, I find it. Okay. Uh, a question from Dr. Ramla. If some color is C4 and we want A2, so what would be the shade for opaque? Yeah. The C, C4 is very dark color. In that case, uh, you may need, yes, uh, you can use both dentin shades, opaque shades, but I think for just the dark color, use a thin layer of opaque will be better because C4 is really, uh, yes, very dark color and we rarely encounter such colors in the clinic. In that case, I advise you to use a, but opaque is different from classical dentin shade. It's a um, special materials. And uh, you can find opaque just from a, a number of brands from a number of country, uh, companies, sorry. Yeah, also with lowering scissors, there, the, 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 there is also a equation. So sorry, first question. Also, this question is from Dr. Ramla. Please explain length of lowering scissors with respect to upper teeth. Yes, also there is an equation between the upper and lower teeth. Uh, I think it's uh, if we uh, say if we say the width of the uh, maxillary incisor uh, tooth is x, then the mandibular incisor I think is uh, nearly. E X minus three, 
I remember like this, but I'm not very sure. Uh, this is, there are lots of equations uh, in different literatures, uh, and you can use one of them, not uh, just golden ratio and also red ratio. There are lots of equations. You can, uh, do, do not memorize them, you can use, you can uh, explore it from the internet and you can use one of them. Uh, but I think the main important is to use the simple one also if you don't use any digital system, digital smile design system. And a question from Ferit Seylano. What do you think about the uh, Shimbashi index for determining the correct length of it? It's like another kind of index. As I said before, the last of index for smile design, the most common one is uh, golden ratio, but uh, you, you may use one of them. I generally prefer uh, the one, uh, especially for anterior teeth, uh, the one that uh, I told about in my uh, presentation. And the question from Noor al-Din Ali al-Mayali. How long is it safe for attraction course stay in the in gums? This is also a good question. I think there's no uh, there's no a standard time uh, for this purpose. But uh, during placing a retraction court, you have to obey some rules. Like uh, you have to first determine the right retraction court. I mean, uh, there shouldn't uh, it should fit the gingival sulcus fat. It shouldn't be too thick or too thin. This is very important. And also you, you should have placed it into the sulcus gently. It means that you shouldn't damage the gingiva during the application. I think this is the main rule, not to damage the gingival head. But we have to do it because gingival fluid and also any bleeding from the gingiva unfortunately can negatively affect the bonding performance of the adhesive system and the composite and also can discolor our composite restoration. And after this, I, unfortunately, we couldn't get good results, aesthetic results at the end of the restoration. Okay, the other restoration, the other, sorry, question. Uh, we were able to watch the webinar later, study further. Unfortunately, no. <laughs> this is live organization, so you won't. <laughs> and also, hello, I comment on the bonding on hypomineralized or hypoplasia cases and advice on trading with MIH restoration. Any trade color selection tricks? Yes, <laughs> okay. Uh, the first question also, yes, hypomineralization is a problem, yes, in the adhesion. Why? Because the characteristics of these lesions, especially uh, in the first, we have to know their histological characteristics. In the hypomineralization, sorry, it's really hard to <laughs> pronunciation, this word, uh, in this case, the surface of the enamel is very hypermineralized. Hyper but uh, there are some porosities in the subsurface. So I think in that cases, it's better to remove this hypomineralized area. It will be better. This can be made by uh, discs or uh, by birds, but just a little touch, not a classical preparation. And we can also remove this part with the acid etching, but mm, to arrange the time is very difficult. So, for example, for uh, such kind of roses or, or in florist tooth, I prefer to remove this uh, hypomineralized area slowly, gently. Generally, it's thickness to be between uh, 20 to 100 micron. So, just little touch is enough. And after that, uh, you can use the classical etching or bonding procedure. And any shade and color tricks, it's really, this is very, very, I think, complex. 
uh, step and complex issue, uh, we have very, we can, you can have difficulties in that issue. It's, it's really very normal because um, the first, the enamel and dentin is a complex, complex tissue. And also uh, the composites have different shades and opacity. And it uh, differs from one company to, comp to another company. Uh, and one product from a company to another product to the, the same company. So it's a very thin, complex uh, issue. And unfortunately, for a better shade selection, you first have to make a good shade selection in the patient, in the mm, tooth. And then you have to know the shade and opacity of your composite very well. And you, for this aim, you have to get experience with that composite and also with the anterior restorations. And Nahid Ahmed, please, how can I attend this? Okay. Manal Al Hussein, I'm sorry for the pronunciation, but. Uh, Yes, if I make any mistakes during calling your names. Uh, what is the difference between the regular composite small filling and direct composite veneer? Hmm. Yes, the difference between uh, regular small fillings generally um, covers uh, such uh, small parts of uh, the facial surface. But if the composite restoration uh, covers all the Buckle surface, generally we call this restoration, veneer restoration. And Dr. Vahdi Kılıç, the use of polishing discs during the polishing phase provides a smoother surface than polishing wheels. Impregnated with diamond particles, since the diamond particles in this constant are harder than aluminum oxide, it can create stretches on the surface. What do you think about this issue? Mm -hmm. Also, it's a good question. Yes, for composite, but according to literature knowledge, we can say that nearly all abrasive particles like diamond or like aluminum oxide, because generally this polishing discs are impregnated with aluminum oxide and also silicon carbide can be used for composites. And generally, diamond particles produce smoother surfaces because it's harder compared to aluminum oxide. And according to the classical knowledge, we can use both diamonds and aluminum oxide paints and also discs, also polishers for composites. Okay. Anonymous attendee, a comment also on use of flowable composite as a permanent filling or combining it within a hybrid is the combination better, uh, especially in deep elevation cases. Yeah, in deep elevation cases. Okay, yes, as I said before, it's a new era and it's a newly developed material. So we have really limited clinical experience and clinical also research about uh, restorative global composites. But according to early results, we can say that it can be used both, both in anterior and posterior. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the question. In anterior and posterior, mm, yes. Uh, but I think, uh, and. And according to this research, the clinical performance of classical non-hybrid compos composite and flowable composite are nearly the same, but in short, short term. We don't have, unfortunately, long-term results because they're new materials. Um, but generally, uh, it is called that it can be used. So. Uh, today, we use this material. But unfortunately, we don't have uh, enough evidence-based results. Is the combination better in deep elevation cases? Uh, for deep elevation cases, for deep, uh, you can use um, both. Uh, 
in large cavities to be to be trust in large cavities uh, i don't prefer but in uh, small cave because yes it can be used but uh, there's no enough uh, clinical research so uh, i don't prefer global compost in very large restorations i'm not large very large restorations uh, but it's my uh, choice uh, according to literature or, or evidence-based route unfortunately i couldn't say you shouldn't use it it's uh, up to the operator's decision and for its low, do you use a composite sealer such as perma seal by ultradent after polishing uh, this is also a very good question, I think, uh, because uh, permaceal is a very good material and also, yes, it can be used, but I think not in all restorations, because um, we generally prefer not to use any resin-based material onto the surface. But if there is a gap or if there is a bubbles on your composite resin after finishing in that case you can use permaceal permaceal is a very good glaze material and we use glaze materials if there is a small gaps or small white areas uh, near to margin or onto the surface we don't know we don't use optical uh, glaze materials or permaceal for shining the for lustering the surface. Generally, classical polishing is enough for that aim, for that case. And the other question, there are conflicting results in comparison of these materials in the literature, but in general, the discs are very successful. Do you think these polishing is are very necessary? Okay, yes, uh, <laughs> discs are really good. Aluminum oxide is a good material, but uh, you cannot use the discs when you're creating or polishing the grooves especially. But uh, we, we can use these wheels for uh, polishing and also uh, for um, adjusting, uh, for smoothing the grooves. So I use wheels. I love wheels. But also I love discs. I, lo I use discs then uh, for or creating approximate surfaces, for creating um, line angles, and also for smoothing and uh, the facial surface, but before creating the textures, I use this. Okay. Is there any more question? I couldn't see mm -hmm. you. Yeah, there are some more questions. There are some more questions. Yes. Okay. If clear silicone is unavailable, what can you use to make the clear silicone index? Um, I don't understand this question. I mean, I don't understand what you mean with clear silicone. Uh, so, well, I, I think they can put uh, another question that uh, describe what they mean. So you oh. can continue, please, with another question. Okay. Because, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, does the use of MDP containing bonds actually increase the adhesion and durability of the restorations? Yes, MDP. Yes, you're right. MDP is a very good functional monomer. And according to some research, yeah, the sulfate adhesives, including you know, the universal and sulfate adhesives, including MDP, uh, bond better to inner and dental surfaces. Yes, you're right. It's a good also uh, material. But it does not mean that. Uh, uh, adhesives that that won't uh, that uh, does not include MDP won't won't well. Uh, there are I uh, limited research about this, and in this research, uh, just uh, one or three more brands are used. So um, I couldn't make any comment uh, about the other adhesive systems, adhesive uh, other brands. Okay, and interest. Explanation long life edge structure valuable information. Thank you so much. Anur Eldan, LAL Mayali, Man Manal Adusion. For how long the nearest last? Uh, yes, this is I think very, very good question. Yes, uh, the main problem is the fracture, as I said before. Mm, it, it's up to the 
patient and especially the hygiene of the patient and occlusion of the patient and the habits of the patient. But uh, I make really direct composite veneers frequently but if you make a good treatment plan if you check the occlusion very well in that case uh, I can give nearly three to five years uh, for such restorations it can last over five years uh, but uh, yes there unfortunately there are um, limited research about the long-term performance of the of these restorations after five years especially uh, according to my clinical experience after five years we encounter some problems in all patients nearly but generally small problems not fractures not fractures in all cases sometimes discoloration and sometimes as uh, the dullness uh, degrees in last year but as i said before we can solve these problems easily because nowadays our composites and also adhesives are very good just polishing finishing or uh, just uh, some uh, repair process small repair process we can solve these problems the main problem is fracture but you can uh, also prevent the fracture by detailed treatment plan including occlusion and also uh, and also preparation what do you think about Omnichroma composite with veneers? Yes, Omnichroma is a universal on one shade composite. This is a one brand and there are also uh, two or more brands in the dental market similar to this composite Omnichroma. I think it's a very good material also for composite veneers uh, because uh, these materials, one shade materials is very successful when they're used uh, instead of enamel. I mean, when they're enamel, uh, substitutes so you can use these materials in uh, for composite finish but if you're on working on enamel if you're working on dentin you may need opaque or dentin shades because it can uh, be more translucent compared to tooth if uh, you use it as a dentin substitute and Mohammed thanks a lot for well, Dr. Esra, I also thank you very much uh, for listening to me, for your attention. And Hannah Patton, what composite brand can be used for masking for patients with fluorosis? Hmm. Fluorosis case for masking saturated. If there is just opaque um, areas in that patient, uh, you can use any dental shade, I think. But if there are severe um, brown uh, areas on the surface. In that case, you can use special opacers. Uh, these special opacers, you can find them from which companies? From GC, also uh, from, uh, I don't know, I think Bisco has a one opaker. Uh, you can use these opacers in variating section if there are severe brown areas on the surface it depends on the patient it depends on the color on, on the shade of the uh, pathologies on the buccal surface and Hatice Erçet in dear professor what are your clinical observations of compass videos in long term stability discoloration patients according to your recommendations yes okay this also a good question uh, I mentioned about the stability and discoloration and yes uh, yes, uh, patients accordance to your recommendations. It's a good question, but my patients generally try to obey all the rules that I advise them. Really, they try to protect. They love their restorations a lot, so they try to uh, protect the restorations. Also, uh, by talking before the restoration, you can understand their desire, their habits and if they can obey your rules or not. And if at the beginning of the restoration, if you think that you can, they cannot obey, it, then you can advise them another alternative. It's, it will be better. And in, as indication is very, very important in composite veneer restoration. Yes, technique is also 
mm, as I think complicated because generally you have to make six, res six restorations together, but indication and treatment plan is really important. I'm not a dentist or a doctor. Can I see perform this non-invasive procedure with the proper training and using a non-invasive technique? Can I see perform this non-invasive procedure with proper training? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. <laughs> but uh, he or she wants to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they can get an appointment there from their dentist. <laughs> yes, uh, I agree with you. Yes, and the other, what about mock-up before start? <clears throat> yes, mock-up before start. We use uh, this mock-up in indirect restorations, but it has uh, also additional cost. Uh, you can make a mock-up in, uh, in your patient uh, with composites, especially uh, for take his or her uh, desire or wants about restorations, you can also make mock-up. But I generally prefer mock-up on cast models uh, because of the its additional cost. But if you want, you can use you can use the classical method when we use in indirect restorations also for direct composite veneers. Hello, Professor, can we give window veneers an edge to edge incisal ablation or is not aesthetic enough? Yes, uh, window prep, you can use also window prep, but it also has some disadvantages. Uh, yes, uh, if, especially if you want to make any sh uh, shape, shape, any change in shape, you couldn't get generally use this preparation. I prefer Federage instead of window prep veneers to eliminate the tooth, uh, contact, tooth um, restoration contact as much as possible. Please, can you give us the presentation? I'm sorry, but I couldn't give my presentation. And Manal addition, does aesthetic dentistry is profitable if you take it as your main job? Yes, I like aesthetic dentistry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a dentist or that I can see before. Oh, yes. Uh, what's the average life of composite veneers? As I said before, if you obey the old rules, if you make a good treatment plan, uh, generally I I can say that yes, it's five years. So the patient can use it five years. Maybe with minor problems like surface discoloration and surface also some degrees in lustre and maybe small uh, marginal discoloration. I mean for injection molding technique. Hmm. Injection molding technique, but enough which one? Yeah. Okay, clear signal is, is enabled. What you what can you use to make clear signal index for injection molding technique? You have to use clean injection, clean silicone for this technique because light curing is just possible with clear silicone. So generally, clear silicone is used in injection molding technique. Can we use composite veneers with bruxism? It's also a good question. Uh, generally, uh, I don't prefer to make composite veneers with uh, uh, indicated in, in the bruxism, in the severe bruxism patients. If there is an indication about bruxism in that case. Thank you so much, dear professor, for valuable presentation and answers. Thank you again also for your kind attention to my presentation. Is there any more question? Yeah, that, that's finished. And that, yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I think yes, our time also is over. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for your uh, great presentation. So, um, the, 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 next, the, next, the next one, uh, sorry? Excuse me, would you mind reminding me? About yes, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, 
First of all, we'd like to thank to Professor Estra for this information, although I didn't understand anything as <laughs> this <is for> dentists, <laughs> which is the place which I don't want to go. No, I don't want to go to a dentist. It's not a good place you want to go, but you have to go and you, we need you, all of you. And also, I would like to thank to our sponsor, Sarenka, as well. And Nice Bridge Academy has organized these events. So nice Bridge Academy has been organizing events about dentists, for the dentists, dental care professionals, um, internationally, events, trainings, education. You can um, follow us uh, with our newsletters and social media accounts. And also, I would like to remind that you dentists have a chance to work in the UK as dentist or dental care professional, dental therapist. If you need more information, you can check our website and also email us from info at kbac.uk. Um, thank you very much again for listening and for this nice presentation. And see you on Wednesday, the same time. Yeah. The, the, uh, the, the second uh, session of the presentation. Okay. Yes, it will be on Wednesday, yeah, on Wednesday. in the lab. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. I will show you how to make a preparation and also layering technique, how to make a composite veneer restoration. You can watch uh, the, my presentation also in the lab. Then on Friday, yeah. on live patient. Also, yeah. I'm excited yeah. about it. <laughs> on live patient, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. See Again, you thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, See you later.